On April 28, 2015, a crew from the Southwestern Railroad were about to park their train in the siding of Roswell, New Mexico, south. The train was was known as the Roswell Local, running on BNSF's Carlsbad subdivision. Leading this train was CFX SD40M-2-3124, and trailing behind it was Union Pacific SD40-2-9851. This train was built for the Denver and Rio Grande Western as well. Afterwards, the local went to go park their train at the end of East Chisholm siding, secured it, and recorded it to the dispatcher afterwards. On the same line was the southbound freight train. This train consisted of 79 freight cars and 9 engines on the head end. Leading this train was Feromex SD70 Ace 4072. Behind it was Feromex SD70 Ace 4070. Feromex ESC 44 AC 4682. BNSF-944CW 1077 BNSF-944CW 1063 BNSF-944CW 5432 BNSF-ES44AC 7134 BNSF-944CW 5108 And finally, BNSF-944CW 4430 At 6.20am, the southbound train was approaching Chisholm sighting. However, they noticed something really strange about the switch and immediately threw the train into emergency. Afterwards, the southbound engineer and conductor bailed out by jumping out the locomotive. And then at 6.23 a.m., it happened. The southbound train collides with the local at 32 miles per hour. 1063, 1077, and 4682 make zigzag shape, while 1077 began to leak fuel from the hard hit it collided with both of those engines. The SD50 had a freight car go up into its nose and smash down on its cab, both of those nodes and cab being completely destroyed from the impact. The conductor of the softbound crew had serious injuries and was flown to a nearby hospital in Texas. However, the engineer, Jesse Cobra, lost his life after jumping from the lead engine. But the real question was, what could have caused such this bad of an accident to occur? An investigation by the NTSB was soon conducted. The conductor of the local said that the switch at East Chisholm siding was set for the main as it should have been. However, the switch that was operating was locked for the siding instead of the main. Also, if we take physics into account, the conductor was probably feeling very, very tired from working a night shift and wasn't thinking how to do his job clearly. Like reason why he said that it was all clear for the main instead of the siding. The conductor of the local was blamed for doing his job incorrectly and causing this accident to occur. But if we take also more physics into account, we could have seen what could have prevented this accident and what could have happened if this accident occurred. If the switch wasn't locked for the main, this accident could have been prevented. However, if this accident did happen, the conductor and engineer should have stayed on board the train instead of jumping from the engine because 32 miles per hour is a risky speed to jump off at. Likewise, the conductor got injuries and the engineer lost his life. It is believed by the New Mexico State Police that if the crew would have stayed on board the train and braced for impact, they would have likely had a higher chance of surviving and only crew members will only receive minor injuries. As for the locomotives involved, all but one was repaired and put back into service. BNSF 1063 was repaired and put back into service and needed some repairs to its nose, so it got what it needed. And also, it returned with the BNSF swoosh logo. The Firmex locomotives were repaired as well and put back into service, and they still operate to this day as well. The only engine that was not repaired was Union Pacific number 9851, which was deemed a total lost and scrapped.